So we've got WWE Survivor Series 2020 coming up Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday on the WWE Network live from the Thunderdome. Oh boy. It's the final farewell. So looking ahead to this show, I got to say the card has some appeal to me. There are some matches that I want to see. You know, the whole kind of weird dynamic of you recently did this big roster shakeup and now you're trying to create some type of Raw versus SmackDown vibe going into this show feels a little weird to me. Um, I will also say that it's kind of weird on the one hand that this year you're not including NXT, but on the other hand, I actually kind of like that. I don't want NXT involved with Survivor Series. I want them to do their own thing, be their own brand. And just when you start incorporating them, then you just get too many things going on. You got too many matches, too many things can happen. Like, no. For me, and I, I mind you, I'm a traditionalist when it comes to Survivor Series. To me, this is a big four pay per view for the company still, all these years later, even though for years they really didn't treat it very well. They didn't certainly treat it like a WrestleMania, they didn't even treat it like a Royal Rumble or a SummerSlam. It felt like they did everything they could over the years to undercut the Survivor Series show, the Survivor Series concept, and that has frustrated me to no end for years. But to me, I want to see those traditional Survivor Series tag matches, and I want to see notable feuds for either important rivalries or important titles be played out here, and that's it. That's what, to me, Survivor Series should be. Uh, looking at the show, like I said, there are some matches that kind of excite me. The dual brand Battle Royal, which is probably destined for the pre-show, I certainly don't think is going to be one of them. I won't be checking out the pre-show, and frankly, most of you won't either, so it does not matter. I want you to get to what is anticipated to be on the main card, though. You've got the New Day taking on the Street Profits. And this is the beginning of the whole Raw versus SmackDown vibe. And like I said, if these, these wrestlers, these performers, had been on their respective brands for months... Like, I can get behind the concept a little bit more. It's almost like the bragging rights concept, you know, and in Survivor Series form. I could get behind that. But, you know, here you've only had a little bit of time to build up to it. You've just moved the New Day to Raw. You've just moved the Street Profits to SmackDown. It just feels kind of weird. Uh, but in terms of this match itself, um, just kind of another day at the office for the New Day. In reality, this is a big spot for the Street Profits. I really believe that. Like, you're in a, a marquee show, you're up against a marquee, notable, really over uh, tag team in the New Day. Like, this is a chance for Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins to really strut their stuff. This is a chance for them to really show up. This is a chance for them to come out of this looking better than they went into it. And I certainly hope that's the case. Because the dynamics of this, this could be a really good match. Just babyface team versus babyface team. No reason to get cute. No reason to do anything funky with it. Just do that. Just let them go at it. Now, when I look at some of the other matches on the card, you know, I have to I have to assume that some of the notable matches are going to be won by SmackDown talents. And I don't even know if they're really caring or going to keep track or try to make any bragging rights thing out of, you know, SmackDown won this match, but Raw won this match. And it's even like, are there even any stakes or anything like that? It probably doesn't really matter. But I would anticipate, while the Street Profits could certainly use the rub, I would be stunned if the New Day doesn't end, ultimately win this match. Now, we get to Bobby Lashley, United States Champion versus Sami Zayn, Intercontinental Champion. On the one hand, I really, really want to get behind this match. Because this would have the potential to be one of those mid-card champion versus champion matches that could be really good. But then on the other hand, I don't want to see Sami Zayn lose. And I just can't imagine they're going to put him over Bobby Lashley in the Hurt Business. This would be the perfect type of match where I would love to see some type of DQ or count-out type of finish and just avoid it. Because to me, there's a fundamental flaw with doing this brand versus brand thing, especially when you're talking about champion versus champion. You really run that risk of making the champion that loses look weaker. You run the risk of making that champion that loses look stupid. And you could say, well, that's overthinking, and that's typical smarky bullshit. And you're right, it absolutely is. But there's a reason, like, when you debut new wrestlers, you almost always have them win their first match or their first few matches, even though I think that's kind of a played-out trope and shouldn't always be the rule, shouldn't be the case. 
uh, the reality is is that you don't want your champions losing too often, otherwise it hurts the prestige of the championship that they have. So you send a Bobby Lashley into a match like this, and he loses, it doesn't help him. You send Sami Zayn into a match like this, and he loses, it's not really going to help him either. It might be easier to have him lose, but that doesn't mean that it's beneficial to either of them, and I think that's just turn right of the challenge. Uh, now, talking about the traditional five-on-five -five tag matches, First, the women's one, again, Raw versus SmackDown. You look at that split there, and I know you got Shayna and Nia in this match, but you got, like, Lacey Evans, Peyton Royce, and Lana. Like, unless you're going to go, Lana goes through a table, but we're going to have her somehow win the ultimate, be the ultimate survivor to say, we're sorry for putting you through all that crap. We've tested you enough. Like, this feels like this has got to be a Team SmackDown spot right here where you're either doing one of two things, where you've got Bianca Belair and Bayley are the survivors for their team, or if you want to have Raw win somehow, some way, you got to sit there and perhaps have Bayley turn on Bianca, which sets up a feud between them two, and you set them off on the races between Survivor Series and Royal Rumble. That, to me, feels like the only two ways you're going to really do it. You know, this is certainly a match that feels like it could use a little more star power in terms of the ladies. And you just really don't have it here. You have some. You know, Bailey has some star qualities to her. I certainly think Bianca Belair has significant star qualities to her and star potential to her. Uh, but to me, it's got to be one of those two things. It's either Bianca Belair and, and Bailey have to be the survivors for their team, or Bailey's got to turn on Bianca Belair and help Team Raw win. It's the only way I think this match will work. Let's hope that it's not 30 minutes of them kind of fumble-fucking around and screwing everything up. Then we get to the traditional five-on-five -five men's tag match. When I look at this here, you got, for Raw, you got Keith Lee, you've got AJ Styles, you've got Sheamus, you've got Braun Strowman, and you got Numb Nuts. He who shall not be named. Team SmackDown's got Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, King Corbin, Seth Rollins, and Otis. Like, on the surface, this feels like a pretty well-balanced-out card, although you've got the two monsters on Raw and Keith Lee and Braun Strowman. Here's the one question I have here. Is we're heading into a Big Four show. You've been pushing the guy a lot, it seems like. Why in the hell is Big E not in this match? Like, you've got Jey Uso, Keith Lee, and eight jars of mayonnaise. Why is Big E not on Team SmackDown here? That's weird. Especially if you're potentially thinking about positioning him in a spot where you want him to win the Royal Rumble in January. This is a perfect type of spot where you put him in here and you have him look strong, you shine him, you have him dominate, eliminate a couple of people, perhaps be the sole survivor for his team. Instead, at least at this time, that's not happening. Well, maybe that changes between now and tomorrow, but I doubt it. This is really, really weird. Um, and again, like I could make, and maybe there's a SmackDown bias here, certainly. Uh, not just because of the Tribal Chief, but just because I think the, the SmackDown brand matters more right now. Their viewership is better. The ratings are better. Certainly a much more interesting product to watch. Like I could make an argument for almost all of these SmackDown people to win their matches, and you just can't do that. You can't totally kill Raw, unless you were going to make an angle or a story out of that. Then maybe that could actually be interesting. Um, but, again, who do, you, who do you have win this? Like, you could have even had a showdown between Keith Lee and Biggie, and you're not getting that. You know, so I would assume, like, some of the last guys left will be Keith Lee and Braun Strowman and maybe freaking uh, Jey Uso, maybe Seth Rollins. Like, to me, this is the type of match, if you're going to do this, then you should really have Jey Uso come out on top. Somehow, some way. Like, you've already done things the past couple of months where you're trying to position him to make him a star. This is the chance to solidify and cement him as a star. He needs to go over here. I don't even know if it has to be as a soul survivor, but he absolutely positively needs to go over here. Flat out, period. And on that note, why in the hell is Retribution not booked on this show either? Like, have they had any pay-per-view matches except the one pay-per-view match that Bobby Lashley won in a couple of minutes? 
You talk about dumbest factions of all time. Every week goes by, they just solidify themselves more and more on that list. Um, so the traditional five on five tag matches that I love, I'm just I'm not finding myself as excited for them as I should be. Now, the women's champion versus women's champion, Asuka versus Sasha Banks, sign me the fuck up for that. Especially when you go to SmackDown, what happened on Friday where Carmelo comes out and attacks Sasha from behind. Sasha ass was looking real good again, and she actually was sounding good this time. Like, that, what she was saying on the mic was so much better than some of the other things she had said in recent weeks. And I love how Asuka's just sitting there like, ain't my problem, bitch. I ain't no Karen. I know how to mind my own effing business. As you should, Asuka. As you should. Like, I really expect this to potentially be a really good match. The biggest, most notable thing that needs to come out of it is Sasha needs to win it. She's got to get the shine here. She's got to go over. Now that you've went there with Sasha, you really need to go there with Sasha. She at least needs to carry this strap through Mania, if not longer. You can't have her talking about being a legit boss and that it's boss time, and then this bitch always loses when she's defending her title. Like I did a video a couple months back talking about if you want people to care about Sasha Banks, you know, then you can't do what you've been doing, because otherwise, why would we care about Sasha Banks? Well, now you have a chance to make us care about her. It seems like a pretty good time to do so. But who gives a crap? It's all about one thing. It's all about the main event match. And that's Raw Champion versus SmackDown Champion. It's Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns. And my God, Roman gave Drew a master class on the mic in that contract signing Friday on SmackDown. Like the Tribal Chief went to work. Telling Adam Pierce to get the hell out of the way. Roman sitting at the head of the table like the tribal chief should. And he just, like, he murdered Drew on the mic. Like, if this was the rap game, Roman's promo skills have to have at least 16 bars. Minimum! Minimum! I mean, this is ritualistic slaughter. It was just casual. Just casual. You know, and the way that he was talking about Drew being the number two guy and the number two champion, and they made him the Raw champ because Roman didn't want to do it. Like, man, that's actually the stuff you got to be a little careful of because it's going to make Drew look really bad. But you know what, Drew? That's what you get for trying to step up to the tribal chief. You mess with the bull, you get the freaking horns. You really want to go there with Roman? You remember how that went before? You thought the beating your ex-wife gave your ass was bad. Just wait until Survivor Series on Sunday. Like, this could be brutal. And it should be. And I want it to be. Yeah! If they don't have the Tribal Chief win here, then they are idiots and morons of the highest freaking order. Romans winning, Period. Period. But I have a feeling like most of us really are perhaps interested in seeing what comes out of this final farewell. And I've got to say this, is that if it's truly the farewell, if it truly, truly is a final farewell for The Undertaker, it must go on last. Because I want to be clear and emphasize that if it doesn't, Nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, is going to be able to follow it. Just like when you dummy sat there and mid-carded HBK and Taker at 25 because you're stupid. It's like when you mid-carded Flair and HBK at 24 because you're stupid. You have to understand the vibe, and you have to understand how things are going to play out. And you have to understand that if you're actually doing this, this has been the thing you've been hyping up for weeks. You've been putting out there in the mainstream in the mass media. Don't give them to it early. Give it to them early. you got to make them wait. It has to go on last. And even if this is a total work, and even if this is total crap, and it's leading towards something else, again, it has to go on last. You cannot do this in the middle of the show and expect things to go well. You cannot put this in the middle of the show and expect it to not be a huge sap on people's emotions and not be a huge sap on the show as a whole. Part of putting together great shows, regardless of what it is, but especially professional wrestling, 
is understanding flow, pacing, timing, etc. Reading the audience, reading the environment. The right read is that must go on last. It must. Because especially if it truly is the swan song, if it truly is the final farewell, People are going to be so caught up in that, they're not going to tweet about anything else. They're not going to care about anything else. It's going to be the thing that people tweet about overnight, all night, will be trending number one worldwide on Twitter. Promise you. Best believe. Now, I know sometimes, you know, I say these things and the company does the opposite and then it doesn't work out and they wonder why the hell that is. And then other times they do what I tell, what I say to do and it works and we wonder why that is. Just learn from the past. Learn from the mistakes of the past. That's the key. It's not just making mistakes. It's about do you learn from them and improve from them. Put this thing on last because nothing will be able to follow it. Period. So I'm curious to hear from you guys. What do you expect to see out of Survivor Series 2020? How badly is our tribal chief going to smash Drew's ungrateful ass all over that place? Who's going to win the traditional five-on-five -five tag matches? Is Sami Zayn going to have to eat the pin for Bobby Lashley? Are the New Day actually going to put over the Street Profits? And what do you think is going to happen with the final farewell for The Undertaker? We're about 24 hours away from starting to get some of those answers on Sunday night as of the time of this recording. I look forward to seeing some of your comments and your thoughts on it. Remember, smash that subscribe button. Make sure you check out the 30 Days of Taker video series. At the time of this recording, I've uploaded 21 installments. Got nine more to go. You want to make sure you check them out. I feel like it's good work. I feel like it's good work. Just like the good work Roman's going to put in on Drew on Sunday. If he does in the ring anything close to what he did in that contract signing and the week before on the mic to Drew... You better have the paramedics ready, because it's going to be a damn near murder.